and we're gonna sort of we're turning on our music right here and let us uh get in so i can kind of introduce you here um richard uh you have I, I have loved talking to you we've kind of met a few months ago and the stories and everything you've been able to tell me has just been amazing and then you have your other half to jill who's also has this amazing background yeah why don't you show us her book here so we can a little higher up a little bit so there we go i'm a famous husband yes <laughs> um and that is amazing just all of the, the history you guys have and experience y'all have you know and uh we kind of melissa yes can i just i just noticed this but jill's family has been in photography since the 1880s oh, wow. i was hoping ryan's been trying to figure out ways where he can be invisible and i won't have it oh it's okay Come you on in, Ryan. Do me a favor. Yeah, we'll see see that there's a photograph. Mm -hmm. Ryan, no, 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 further back to the as you enter the kitchen. To the left. So on the wall. On the other the other direction. Right there. You know? You know? I don't know what you're that. about. That's okay. Few people do. Of Jill's great grandfather when they lived, they had a chain of retail. Uh, electronic stores in Germany dating back to the 1880s. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and Brian, they, the Leica camera family, um, helped them escape Germany. Mm -hmm. They opened a camera store in 1939, and this is a, a picture. What's that? Here it is. Thank you. Can yeah, you I think we get the glare kind of hits it more. There we go, a little higher up. That's closer. Yeah. Great grandfather, Jill. Yeah. Is it your great grandfather or your grandfather in that store, in that photograph of great grandfather? Great -grandfather. They had six uh, stores and they sold like the cameras. And when uh, the government of Germany, um, you know, had policies that really did not put Jill's family in a good position. Mm -hmm. They contacted the Leica, the Henry Lights, who was the, uh, uh, is it Henry Lights or Hans Lights? Hans Lights? Yeah. It was Ernst Lights. Ernst Lights. My grandfather is Hans or Henry. But Ernst Lights, but um, your grandfather's the one who contacted Ernst. Ernst and said hey listen we got to get out of dodge mm -hmm. and they set them up there and uh helped them open a camera store in 1939. oh can you jill can you get that yeah. in 1939 where jill and i were born in the early 50s me earlier than her <laughs> uh much earlier <laughs> <laughs> um but they opened up uh one camera store and then two. Here, let me put that one so you're bigger on there. They originally were the Aaron films. Jill, what's the story? I forget of why they or when they changed their name from Aaron Feld to. They Antioch. changed their name when they were in Miami Beach, and wanted to open up a store, and no one could pronounce Aaron Feld. I thought it was so in Wrightsfield when they when they came to North Carolina first. No, they didn't uh, change it until they were going oh. to move to Miami Beach. Okay, by the way, this is going to be immortalized. And so I'm giving you, say, no more than five occasions when you correct me. Oh. <laughs> That's <attempting>. not enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're attempting to cast That's an illusion. That's to be much more. We're, we're attempting sorry. to cast an illusion. I think that's it. Phone because the kids are. Oh, yes. The children right. are texting. I wonder yeah. what Sally's saying. Sally's saying that. Looking piece. great, Dad. <laughs> ah, they're watching. Great. Oh, this is on something? This is live streamed right now on our Facebook and YouTube channel. And um, it, it's a real casual conversation piece that we do every month. But we were excited. You know, when he showed me your, um, your Ellis Island exhibit and stuff like that, it was. That's just breathtaking. So I, I, I can't wait till we can get 
one with you on here too, Jill, just to kind of talk about how you basically curate, you know, a, a photo exhibit like that that you did on Ellis Island, because that's amazing. Jill it's does these traveling, correct? The Jill does these lectures around the world. Yeah. Oh my I, I I've been looking at some of your photos from the links that he said. And um I, I tell him um I started in photography uh really young. Um basically my uh, friends were in rock bands and it was like, here's a camera. Cool. And uh, in high school was probably the first time I got any formal education in photography. And it was with a Pentax K1000 where the camera body came back from Vietnam, but not the lens uh, or the person attached to it. So I inherited this uh, Pentax so, K1000 body. Do you mind saying that one more time? Go ahead. No, do you mind? saying what you just said about coming back from Vietnam? Oh, the, the camera body came back from Vietnam. The lens and the person attached to it did not come back from Vietnam. But being subtle. I, yeah, <laughs> very subtle. But I have the, the camera body and mm -hmm. uh, I still have that Pentex K1000. Um, so I started mm -hmm. with dark room developing and doing, you know, 120 and 220 kind of films and E6 processing. Wow. And I worked in photo labs. So I love, it was kind of no real instruction because I didn't know where to go look for places to do, you know, photography instruction. And there was stuff like uh, community dark rooms uh, I could get into after high school so I could use their lab. But I be, got real lucky to be the photo editor of my university um, newspaper. So I was able to still have a dark room and an enlarger to play with. And uh, and at the same time, I worked at a one-hour pro photo place. So, um, Kodak. Did, yeah, Kodak. So I, I, it was a family-owned place. We used to, huh? They were king those Kodak. Yes, Fox yeah. Photo too. I remember Fox Photo Labs, where you could just drop off your your film, and Fox Photo would get it done for you. Uh, so I, I loved photography and. Um, just trying different things before we had Photoshop and learning solarization and screaming my head off the first time I really messed it up and probably did, you know, a 24 exposure. Uh, <laughs> right here. So it, it was things like that, that, you know, um, it, it was just kind of learn on your own and maybe you could pick up a photo book somewhere. And, and sometimes it was covered in chemical that was so you couldn't read everything. <laughs> Um, so I took some photography instruction that way. And then when digital came around, I think I just felt so intimidated by digital, you know, and then I wasn't really happy with the pixelation because I like to print big. That was my thing. And, um, you know, it, it was it was disheartening, I think, when digital first came around. Um, so I kind of took a thing. But so to watch somebody who's excelled. You know, I mean, you, as a kid, you like, I think my photographers, I looked up, you know, Ensel Adams. Everybody loves the black and whites. And, um, you know, you had uh, Annie Leibovitz who did Rolling Stone. That was my, okay, that's what I want to do. I want to be rock and roll. This is what, and if, if you notice, actually, the shirt I have on is. I did notice that. <laughs> Modern Rocks Gallery in Austin, which is an amazing gallery the owner came over from london and he had access to all of these photographers who shot the beatles the rolling stones uh jimi hendrix uh janice joplin and then being in austin he was able to get a lot of photographers who shot for a lot of uh rock concerts in the austin area which at one time there used it's to be so many for their music austin yeah. is renowned for their music. yes and it is a great gallery that showcases uh photography um so i, I wanted to make sure to wear this today while we did this just if you're in uh, the texas area and you get to austin this is definitely something you have to go see it's if you're if well, you're photography yeah. or rock and roll melissa i'm sort of i'm not really comfortable with shameless promotion like oh that. Like logos. Just, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Bring that in a little closer, Richard. Let us really see that. There you go. My, my head's a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have. I'll have to get one of y'all's shirts. So I can wear it on some of our our lives. Well, 
Um, and that we're going to go into Digital Photo Academy in a second. I just have a couple of quick announcements, seeing how James is not here, guys. I, uh, James would normally give a quick little uh, December announcements and stuff, but I'm seeing how he had to do a couple of dad things. Um, I'm going to do this. So let me uh, just give a Take your time. Share my screen here. And we're going to go into this window right here. Okay, so there's a couple of things we want you guys to be aware of. Um, and that is going to be that we have uh, deadlines coming up soon. Uh, so as many of you know, a lot of our artists, photographers, our customers, y'all have your Etsy shops, your Shopify. Please note these uh, dates if you want to get your um, uh, photography, your art, to your customers by Christmas. Anything that is a framed order needs to be in by Monday, December 11th, okay? And any of the HD face mounted acrylic prints also have to be in by Monday. So we can get, that gives us enough time back there to produce it and get it to the carriers, okay? So USPS, if you've been with us for several years, you know how Christmas is. We do also use FedEx and UPS to get these um, to your customers. So try to be very uh, noteworthy of all of these uh, dates. December 12th, Tuesday will be the ceramic tiles, pillows, cutting boards, coffee and tea mugs, slates, maple wood prints, uh, the petite frame uh, prints, wall art standouts, photo art panels, Christmas ornaments, stickers, labels, coasters, uh, desktop organizers, keepsake box, mouse pads. December 16th, Saturday, that's a Saturday, um, wood prints, dye bomb metal prints, HD Chromalex metal prints, uh, acrylic plaques, gator board prints, canvas prints mounted in stretch, uh, fine art paper prints mounted or matted and stickers, all those orders all need to be in by Saturday, December 16th. And then our final deadline, December 18th, next following Monday, uh, canvas prints, unmounted and unframed. Those are like if you're just sending somebody a rolled uh, canvas right there. Fine art paper prints, unmounted and unframed. Cards, Kodak prints, and posters. Uh, so those are our dates. Uh, you'll see it on our social. We'll have that on there. I hope everybody had fun with the Cyber Week sale. Uh, it was a, a, it was a lot of fun, and we've gotten the orders. As I said, most of us um, this time of year, this the staff is cleared out. So you might have staff walking in the background on this one. Um, some of us are here to midnight. We have some dedicated people there that will work till 8 a.m. the next morning. Um, really trying to get all of the prints and everything out because uh, we have to get this stuff out. So by the time deadlines hit, everything is going out. So this is a crazy time of year. Also know that our customer service staff does answer emails within one uh, business day. So if it's on a Friday, it'll be Monday. But our um, answers sometimes go to spam because uh, I have a lot of social media, you know, nobody's answering my emails and I go in and you've sent us 14 emails um, in some cases and we've answered each one of them. Uh, so try to be mindful of that because when you're sending that many emails, um, there's people that are also trying to get their stuff answered as well. and you know, it, it kind of um, bottlenecks that whole uh, thing. And, and emails are always going to take priority right now over voicemail, guys. So just check your spam. It's probably there. And we've answered you. Uh, if, if not, if you still can't reach us, you can try on our social. Or what about, uh, you know, I have access to your personal cell number. <laughs> yeah, you do. Does that help? <laughs> let's not do that because that will you know what's so funny is as anybody does nowadays if you don't know the phone number nobody answers um so i guess in a way it's okay because i probably have a bunch of people asking me about my extended warranty on my thing i just never answer this right. so yeah. i make sure to put everybody i know their phone numbers in my thing so i know who's calling um unless you catch me while i'm moving furniture or something like that. That's what you had called the last time I, I was moving furniture. <laughs> I have caught you. I'm relentless, as you know. Yeah, I don't mind it. You have great stories. You and I can be on. Yeah, um, we do. We end up chatting, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I love our chats. They're great. Me too. And, and um, Okay, so for those of you who are joining today, if you're in the chat, 
go ahead and let us know where you are watching from. Um, if you have questions for myself or Richard as we're doing these, go ahead and use that uh, live chat feature on YouTube or on Facebook, and I'll pop your question up on the screen and we'll be happy to answer it. Um, me, the best I can. <laughs> so with that, without further ado, uh, let me go and stop sharing my screen. We'll come back to this in one second. Um, I want to have Richard here. Just tell us a little bit about you and uh, how you got it, where you are now with Digital Photo Academy. Because you told me you're not a photographer. So how no, did all that happen no, for you? I, I love photographs and I love photographers, particularly one. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I'm kind of uh, cynical about built-in obsolescence, where that sort of manipulates people into repeat purchases. Now, all of a sudden, I'm talking to you, but I can't see you. And I, I have not left the last century, really. and I don't know that I ever will. So it's a slight adjustment. I'm, I'll be fine. <laughs> but um, uh, when I was watching, oh, there you are. Okay. I'll pop myself in. <laughs> thank you. That's very calming to me. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> um, it got started back really when there was an ad campaign before you were born, I think. <laughs> Canon said their tagline was now it's canon mm -hmm. um i think it was in the 80s or the 90s okay i was really old already by then too <laughs> well you've had work done because you look like you're in your 20s to me uh it, it's hispanic genes but we just say that we're actually vampires so <laughs> i see I say that my phone is a vampire and they want my blood until yep. I die. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I was, what's that? Oh, to, you were talking about the Canon campaign? Okay, well, um, I was, uh, 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 I worked uh, at a big publishing firm, an international firm and I uh, worked on two photo books, which a lot of uh, the people taking pictures today have never heard of, called Popular Photography in American Photo. And um, I had been over to Japan, and the people at Canon said, we have some big plans coming up. And... I'm a tiny bit concerned about some of the things might get me sued. <laughs> They're all true. Um, and this guy, I can't remember his name. I mean, I might, but I'm not going to say it because I might be wrong. But he was a chain smoker, which is was not typical in the board meetings. Uh, I used to go to Japan every other year. And he said, we're going to eat Nikon's lunch ad campaign became now it's canon and it was right about the time some people uh, might remember when these white zoom lenses began appearing on the sidelines of televised football games and they were canon lenses and they were quite noticeable because before that they were all black on the sidelines of the sports photographers catching the games. And these white uh, lenses were quite prominent. And right about the same time, Canon was introducing their products to Nikon shooters, well-known Nikon shooters, uh, and giving them good reason to switch to Canon. And some of them did. And the marketing director at the time, Jill was a Nikon ambassador at the time. And Jill was shooting a campaign in Hawaii. And she's a brilliant photographer and also a superpower with real estate. I don't understand it. But other than that, 
sometimes she does things that are confusing. And she finished her last shoot that was still in the camera for an ad campaign for the Holly Kalani Hotel in Hawaii. And she and her assistant wanted to catch a nice panoramic view. So she parked the car, locked it, of course, with her camera equipment sitting on the front seat and ignored the huge sign that said, beware of thieves. So she locked her door, figuring, well, the door is locked. She's fine. As they were coming back from the uh, looking at the view across the street, a car drove up, and I don't think they tried the locks, but they did have a brick. And uh, they broke the, uh, the windshield and took the equipment and drove off. I think, Jill, you were admonished by the cop who said, didn't you see the sign? Anyway, Jill thanks had to for go. The story, honey. What? <laughs> I said thanks for the story. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, then so Jill lost her equipment, and the last shoot for the ad campaign was still in that camera. Oh, wow. But she went right over to a, another event that was sponsored by Canon, and she said the funniest thing happened. But, um. I don't have a camera. And they said, well, here's a camera and other things that I won't go into. I'm already getting nervous that I shouldn't be telling you. Uh -huh. And she wrote a letter to the people at Nikon where she was an ambassador. The funniest thing happened. And I got a call since I was the publisher of the photo magazines. And they gave us a lot of advertising and we had become good friends. And they didn't think it was so funny that she switched to Canon. And it was that conversation that launched into something called, now I'm talking 20, 25 years ago, maybe, um, the Nikon Mentor Series, mm -hmm. what it was called. And we would um, announce in the magazines that um, photographers who are idolized by photo enthusiasts who read our magazines uh, are going to Morocco or are going to Fiji or Brooklyn or Seattle. And you can come along as long as you pay your airfare and to attend the workshop. And you can not only have a, uh, a lesson by this famous photographer, who's Elvis Presley or Madonna and also then have a beer and spend a week around the world. And uh, my family got to travel around the world as well. But so that started the Nikon Mentor Series. And then another company said, we want to do something similar. And that was Sony. And we launched Sony Digital Days. Uh, the Nikon Mentor Series was announced in our magazine. You know, so many people would see one of a photographer who was going to be taking 100 people to an exotic destination. But what Nikon really wanted was to see that that photographer was a Nikon user. Also, if I would get a call saying, hey, I'm switching to... Canon, I'd say, well, how about if we pay you to go to uh, um, Fiji or uh, Israel or uh, Belgium, and we pay you, and their minds were changed back, <laughs> and they stayed with the company that had been very kind to them. Uh, and so that is how the program started. But then uh, Sony came and they had taken the uh, Minolta intellectual property after Bell and Howell had sued Minolta for using their, uh, their engineering without authorization or something nasty in the business world. I don't quite remember the details. But um, 
So mm -hmm. Sony bought that equipment and then said they want to do something similar to what Nikon was doing with the Mentor series. And we decided they were going to have 18. Uh, we partnered with the Marriott and we had 18 weekend workshops around the country. And we, that metaphor sort of was the circus comes to town. Instead of a, um, uh, small workshops like the Nikon Mentor Series, we would fill up a conference room uh, and then have all the, uh, the Sony equipment brought by a local retailer to sell there. And, you know, we'd call, I don't remember, again, I'm from the last century. We would get models, you know, goth people or, you know, um, surfers or, and they would come to be photographed mm -hmm. at this weekend uh, convention. The circus comes to town. And then I got another call uh, that they would finance. If we did this, they were having trouble breaking into the business as well. And um, we were with them for five years. I'd like to thank and hopefully not get sued uh, for, uh, I'd like to thank Rich Campbell, who uh, has another corporate job right now, and he's, he's brilliant. He's very strict, and he has a temper. But he's amazing, and we're still friends 18 years later. And uh, he said, I want to do this. And it was sort of a traditional, non-traditional, uh, but we launched the uh, digital them at the retail level. And he said, well, do you have photographers in the 24 top markets in this country? He said, absolutely no problem. That's easy enough. And they signed on the dotted line. Then I had to go find photographers in 24 months. <laughs> I'll deny that later, so don't. <laughs> uh, but we found them. We've made some great friends. Most of them, 17 years later, are still with us. Mm -hmm. And Ryan was asked, or I asked Ryan today, what do you think my favorite part of this insane business of dealing with, you know, people who reserve a, a seat on one of our live workshops in 24 different cities, but I can't go because, you know, my dog is sick, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, or uh, the photographer getting some big travel to sign. A lot of last minute agenda. It's an industry term. Uh, but anyway, um, I love it. And I love not only the friendships I've developed with photographers, I distinguish them from cameras, but as photographers, I feel so good to relate to them or marry them. <laughs> they tell us what we need to hear, whether we should be ashamed or whether we should be proud. They bring it into our living rooms and we have to face it. We need to improve the world and photographers help us do that. And um, so that's one of my favorite parts, but also the calls that I get, especially since 12 years ago, Match.com called us. Do you know what Match.com is? Yeah, the, I think a lot of people have. It's one of the first, I think, dating that people really had heard about when they got online. You know, as the World Wide Web took off, I think Match.com was right oh, there at the beginning. By the way, by the way. Um, I'm going to force my way back into the conversation. No problem. I spoke with the people of Match.com and they commented on, they were looking at the, uh, at the uh, uh, Finer Works new section on our website, and commenting on how beautiful the pictures are. And they, uh, it's um, Travis and Amy are wonderful people. And uh, I've been working now with them in 12 markets. Oh, yeah. Do you see it? Do you, yes, that, I do. Yeah. Can you? Let me bring that up and then let me give us a better look on here. Yeah. Well, they said they noticed that and they would like to take next steps to see if we can, at the live workshops we do for them in 54 cities. When I was a kid, 
the dating line, the dating services, uh, they would have a group event maybe in a hotel lobby or that speed dating stuff. Oh, oh, uh, stop, uh, slow down on that. Yeah, stop there. Thank you. Um, I had accidentally put in, uh, go, yeah, see where it says Phyllis Fitzsimons? Yes. Phyllis, are you listening? Phyllis, Phyllis, I hope you're listening. I screwed up. And now if you scroll down a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further, stop. A little, see where it says Gay Murphy? Uh-huh. When we switch to the December winners from our social media pages, Celebrating Senior, celebrating senior Shutterbugs and the Digital Photo Academy community, um, I accidentally kept uh gay's name you know back up to the shop that now says phyllis um i had accidentally kept it as phyllis fitzsimmons and these the uh, people are very proud to win these prizes and get the beautiful reproductions you make and send them to them promptly uh and it took about an hour for phyllis to very sweetly reach out to me and say that's a my picture that ain't Gay's picture. And I promised her in this conversation that I was going to apologize. So if you're listening, Phyllis, and it's Phyllis Fitzsimons, not uh -huh. Fitz Fitzsimons, not two M's, okay? Uh -huh. So put that in your newsletter. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then in the next newsletter, I will publicly apologize again. <laughs> Phyllis has been wonderful about it. But anyway... So this afternoon, I had a conversation with Travis Hartley and Amy Dietrich, who have been very kind to this Luddite who remains in the last century and trying to help me, you know, fill out Google Docs and TikTok and all of this stuff that's terrifying. They're so nice, but they're saying they want to have further discussions about collaborating with Finer Works. They feel that it's a great synergy with uh, dedicated, passionate photographers. And so that's a, you know, if you're in the business world, I'm sure you know, um, uh, Melissa, that next steps don't mean nothing. But yeah. they did say it and they commented on how they feel that your um, product line is a great synergy with their match.com workshops. Uh, also specifically, Match.com does, instead of just two people awkwardly having drinks or dinner and, you know, prearranging a fake emergency phone call if it's not working out, they now do bowling uh, parties or wine tastings. We produce two-hour workshops in 54 cities around the country for them, for them so people can get to know each other in a group rather than something that can become awkward uh, in a one-on-one. -on -one. And we've been doing that for 12 years, and nothing would please me more than if we somehow tied in, and you and I talked about that, mm -hmm. tied in some sort of uh, promotion with Finer Works, so at each live event, we can provide a code or, or some, do something special they have rules about offering prizes. Yeah, and, as everything does. <laughs> uh, I, and you remember what happened with Facebook, with Facebook when we yeah. announcing it. I, you know, I thought the CIA was going to show up. At <laughs> I mean, again, I want to go back to the last century. Yeah, I know. I know the feeling. Every everything now is is out there for us for scrutiny. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so I said to. Ryan, I said, what do you think are my favorite things? And he kind of looked at me like another annoying question from this crazy man. <laughs> but he guessed it. I love talking to people who are taking our classes and, around the country and sort of uh, noticing a, a path of self-actualization. Mm -hmm. To see someone, you know, it's not like we're selling nuclear weapons or, you know, we're doing something to help people help themselves. And I'm 70 years old 
And that, I think, is my favorite part of this job, of talking to the students. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to connect with people. It really is. It is. That's why we have this thing on a monthly basis. We wish we could do it. I mean, Final Works started as an online business, so our customers are spread out across the world. In 2002? Uh, we start, yeah, about that. Jay James actually started this out of his garage as a photographer doing wedding photos and making canvas. Ryan, Ryan helped me by what we did. We background checked James. Oh, yeah. And uh, I thought it was very interesting that he has a, uh, he studied Middle Eastern uh, studies and then became a police officer. Mm -hmm. And then I saw some of the people he recommended. And they had similar Greek heritage names. <laughs> yeah. And that he's uh, married, I believe, to, uh, don't tell me. Um, well, she has the same last name. Sorry. I just, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, Monica's a, a co founder here, too. Yes, Monica Theopiston. Theopistos, yes. Theopistos. Oh. Yeah, and it's a Greek name, so I may even be butchering it too. Uh, but you know, it, it's a. Well, it's what I noticed, what I, I'm on a roll here. <laughs> what I noticed was that, in a way, I have a problem with these gigantic international conglomerates, you know. And I know my when one of our chats, you told me that back in in the early 2000s, there were five crazy people just working relentlessly yeah. and and we started as a very small business as well and it's great to connect with your customers i think you've cloned yourself i don't know how you do everything you do <laughs> i took four months before i was like yeah this is great well they'll give prizes and everything and i said please don't be offended but i'm nervous about announcing something and then getting a recording that says, thank you for your patience. <laughs> you might find it easier to go to our website and we don't care what you think because we're just a machine. <laughs> you know, if you want to kick the vending machine that gave you a bag of M&Ms instead of the Milky Way you thought you were buying, you're the fool, not the machine. Yeah. And so I, I hung up the phone after our first conversation and I mentioned to Ryan, I don't want to just jump in because what happens if we put on our uh, website and our social media, the so-and-so's winning and then, you There's know, nothing coming. Recorders. so I was afraid to do it, but I vetted you. <laughs> I, I just thought it was too good to be true. And I don't know how you do it, <laughs> but you are so on top of things i really don't know how you do it but insomnia I, helps but i was further <laughs> i was further um encouraged because both of us uh james and i started from small business and i'm still small uh but um it's a way to connect with people in a way that's so much more satisfying and uh and so i noticed that's how he started he's married to someone in the fine art world uh and so more and more i'm just thrilled that we're growing together we didn't right away put you on our website yeah but now you're there as you just mm -hmm. showed and i'm so glad you are and i think we're going to keep growing together yeah i think we will too and it's like i said um one of the reasons we started this partnership and that we have partnerships like and I'll uh, just going to acknowledge this. Jim, thank you very much. This is Jim Landers who does. Uh, oh, yeah. I was just on the phone with him today. Yeah. Jim is the great. We love Jim here. Um, There's another but, example, though. I needed a photographer because we're opening the Match.com market yeah. in uh, San Antonio. And I asked you and you gave me his name. Yes. And He's, he knows every, oh, probably every photographer here in San Antonio. And it's probably yeah. trained him how we're growing together yeah and this is when like he does photo essay which is one of the photo clubs here in san antonio that we partner with can and you back up so we can all look at him well uh, yeah sure let's put this here jim let me go ahead we'll have the here yeah. we are jim landers the great jim landers uh jim i should have probably just had you, you great website too yeah he's um 
he has probably taught a lot of photographers here in the San Antonio area, um, or that you have participated in his meetup group, Photo SA. Um, and it is, I, Jim and I met one back in my, um, back in the, my photo lab days when I worked at One Hour Pro Photo and uh, Jim worked for a company that did uh, school portraitures. So he would come in and drop off those films and we would develop those uh, portrait packages. And, um, uh, you know, so that was probably back in 1994 when we were doing that, Jim. I think that's the first time I, I met you was back there. Jim is on, is he? Yeah, he's on. He's on. He's right on now. Jimmy. Hey, Jim. <laughs> and so he's here on the the live chat. Can I should you, have. Can you put his picture on here? Sure, I can put his picture back up here. Can you talk back to us? Uh, no, I should. Uh, Jim, if you're wanting to join, I can send you. Well, he our... might actually be watching the, a Yankee game, and that's <laughs> maybe. <laughs> he's about yeah. So we've known each other about thirty years ago. Yeah, so we've known each other for about thirty years, um, but. He has he his group and and photo clubs like that keep this uh, energy going about photography, and I want you know and it's had its ups and downs because as digital came in, as people started getting cell phones with a camera that had you know really nice resolution, um, he, people didn't know whether to invest in a Nikon or a Canon. Any SLR cameras is it's a pricey investment, and then now to be oh, competitive with a print, you need to have at least Light Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. You have to have this other tool bag of of understanding how you know your photo works and then how it's going to go and translate into a print. And then Jim has what he has done, what I think differentiated him here locally is he taught photographers not only to be an artist in it, but how to claim their business and make money on it, how to make portrait packages, how to develop those relationships with clients. He's like, I love what Jim does in his own portrait photography. He doesn't just take your picture and that's it. He returns to your home with this canvas he finds out where you're going to hang it in your home and then he presents it by hanging it there in your home. And you have this lovely portrait that's done by him of your family. He's and also very laid back and very easy to talk to. I just met him on the phone today. Oh, good. And I told him that you're the one who set it up. <laughs> yeah. So he, so people partnering with people like Jim, like yourself that have businesses that encourage people to do photography and, and keep it the art form going is, is something that we we were interested in here. Because again, that's where James started off. Was don't James. sell yourself short. You were <laughs> a big part of that. I, I love this company. I, I can tell people I came in to put in an order and then I saw that they had a six month temporary position. And I thought oh, I'll just be here six months and I've now been here six years. Um, and one thing I like about smaller companies that start even like family businesses is, you know, there's a, people tell you in business not to take things personally, but I, I like to take things personally. I, I like working with people um, and our customers are great like that. There's a lot of customers I've learned worldwide, you know, um, and when we had the pandemic, we were doing some of these meetings from my home and you oh, know right and that's my true. granddad would pass that's in the background and he would get a kick out of his head floating in the I picture think, so I, think I met your daughter maybe maybe my daughter she's probably been in the background of some things when i'm doing at home um but it's um uh, it, it was great you know so when he even passed i had people our customers who sent me you know condolence cards and emails and stuff and it was again, a relationship I know we have with our customers. And there's that's what I like about y'all's organizations is that y'all kind of do that the same thing with photographers. So I wanna actually show your site and really quick, I'm just, I think I asked earlier and we'll see what the little uh, comments were, is what camera body guys or what camera brand do y'all like to shoot with? And uh, 
think uh, Landers right there had a Nikon. Well, I know Ken Ross, for example, is a big Canon freak. Mm -hmm. He teaches for us in Atlanta. Uh, and if it's a Nikon student, then we've got to go to Stan Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, also in Atlanta. They're good buds. Um, uh, there's uh, Sony shooters. Uh, we've got them all over the country. Now, one of our classes is master your camera control mm -hmm. and if you go to any of those if you click on say click on um uh well where are you let's see where we're in I? san antonio in texas here so um, we're, we're in three locations in uh got houston well yeah go to dallas. um yeah i know but go to dallas Just click on it. And now you're going to see a bunch of photographs all about Dallas. But now scroll down and then say the Dallas Museum of Art. You, um, mm -hmm. you can do this. I'm pointing to my screen like you can see me. <laughs> uh, see where under venue it says Dallas. We have over 300. Just if you click on the Dallas, uh, just that, that's embedded. This is taking my, oh, there you go. Okay, so um, the group will meet at the Dallas Museum of Art, and it'll be a lesson in shutter speed and architecture, and uh, the teacher, and they vary. Let's see, which one is this one? Scroll up and see uh, who this one is. Uh, um, Oh, you know what? If you want to, we have about 50 teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four in Dallas. Um, and uh, you have, so you'll know who your teacher is and you'll meet them. And it'll start with master your camera control. That information is provided up front because while our teachers know all the cameras, um, they like to deep dive the exact model number in case there's some special feature that connects you with the GPS or, you know, uh, you can make uh, videos or and so on and so forth. So the first part of the class is master your camera control where you sit and the teacher explains what it is about your camera. And then for the next three hours, there's composition in the field where you walk around with the teacher and you're forced to use what you observe being explained in the sit down portion. And when you're forced to use it, it further reinforces your understanding of the automatic and manual controls of your camera. And simultaneously, uh, hey, John, how are you? Who's <laughs> anyway, so uh, I don't know what that means. Again, okay. I'm still in the last century. Uh, but um, and the, so while they're learning about composition strategies, they discover, with the help of the teacher demonstrating and supervising, things that they unconsciously do when they take a picture, when they don't realize that they need to crop out a garbage can that mm -hmm. they didn't want in there or that they're shooting with everything in the center and then they learn about rule of thirds but while they're learning all of these composition strategies they're also using the, and operating the camera while the teachers there because often they think they know everything that they learned in the sit down portion and then they get home and realize they forgot 80 percent of it but when it's further reinforced during the composition in the field section, that helps them to remember. And we have about 40% repeat clientele. And, um, you know, and it's fun. And I get to know all, all of these people, especially the Match.com people. They're, uh, they're... Um, are, are they new to photography, the Match.com 
people well, some see. of them for the Match.com classes, they just want to meet someone under a neutral environment. They might bring a cell phone. Yeah. I thought it was a clever concept. I, I, I was like, that's... Well, that's Travis it. called me. And I'll deny that later, Travis. <laughs> uh, and uh, and he, um, he said, let's try this. And we didn't screw it up. And that was 12 years ago. And they're very patient with us when we do screw it up. Mm-hmm. As happened once or twice. Well, yesterday, uh, this past weekend, Orlando, uh, we were shooting there with Mike Kennedy, a brilliant guy, um, and would just do anything. He's just a, such a generous soul. Uh, the weather was fine for the sunset shoot. You need to get that? Oh, that's not me. That's oh. me. Oh. I just turned it off. Is it oh, Sally? Don't yes. worry about it. Like I said, these are always really informal. Yeah, well, I'm a pretty formal guy. <laughs> I was going to wear a tux. I thought oh. you were going to conduct this from the bathtub, honestly. So I was kind of waiting for <laughs> to see what I was going to get. <laughs> I'm surprised as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, uh, so they had 20 people who RSVP'd. But there was a thunderstorm a half hour before the sunset shoot, before the class started. So Mm -hmm. only two people showed up. Now, our teachers get paid anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, but so there are things that happen. And Amy and Travis, I'm like, okay, this time I'm dead meat. They're going to this will be the end of it. (laughs) You know, and they just laugh. Amy every now and says, I'm confused. Do you want me to fire you? (laughs) You know, but they're so patient and it's not, even though it's a gigantic company, that division, it's like family. I was just FaceTiming them uh, today. And uh, that's when he, when Travis made this comment, how amazing the photographs are that he sees on the uh, finer workshop prize winners and on our social media pages that the photographers and the students take. And um, so uh, things happen uh, and get complicated. You know, when people are really there because they want to meet someone else, sometimes other issues come up. Mm-hmm. And I'm a nutty guy. I'm sure that's coming across now. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoy talking with these people when they think I'm just uh, kind of uh, a clerk Mm -hmm. because match.com provides the phone number of the photographer who's teaching and to me. So Sunday mornings are Grand Central Station around here Mm -hmm. and um, you meet all kinds of interesting personalities and it's easy to not be offended if it gets a little ugly because you know that you're doing the best you can, and they're just nervous if something goes wrong, you know, like they're late or they're lost. And it feels good to be able to calm them down or let them tire themselves out by screaming. <laughs> and then they calm down and it works out. Yeah. So I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> I think you were kind of going on on how this all happened with Match.com. But yeah, he called. Uh, he called me. Yeah, and and like I said, it was a it's a great idea because it, it is um, a really great you know it's common interest to really build on. And it, like I said, photography is I, I tell people it's kind of like a lifetime thing. Even when you think you're out of it, you're still in it. But it's um, not a bond. Yeah, I, I love it. So universal language. Yeah. And you can relate to each other by showing them a photograph that tells us that one right oh, where it's on an automatic slideshow. Yeah, it's just on the, the but, um you know, there are it's um joyful to mm-hmm. learn about how you can tell a story with a photograph. Can you would you mind going to uh Facebook, the F on the right? Okay, right here. Uh, lower okay. down, lower down. Okay, right here. No, lo- yeah, that one. Look at this one. Well, Jerry, my buddy, put this up. 
Uh-huh. Go down a little bit for oh no, go up, go up, because that's the picture I'm talking about. Okay. Can it go further or no? No, that's as far oh, as then go down then go down because you'll see it again. Okay. It just went up recently. Okay. These are all uh there you go. There to me that picture is it's just it's a dream, it's almost a personality projector. Mm-hmm. You know, Edgar Allan Poe might see something uh, uh, foreboding, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, Cartier-Bresson or Elliot Erwitt, who recently passed away, might see something more whimsical. And, you know, the kitty getting its paws wet, guided by its journey, the reflection of the birds. And to me, I could gaze at that photograph. It's like taking a Xanax. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm the same I, way with yeah. The I, uh, I've, never, I've never taken a Xanax ever. There's or, there's there's a transcendence you get with with photography. Um, right. Yeah. There's a, there's a mood it sets, and again, to me, that's why it's so important to um, to kind of cultivate photographers, especially budding photographers that are from another generation now that where they've never had. Um, something, you know, to hold and teaching them to go ahead and take a pride in a piece of art that they created with a camera and making these into prints that are displayed um, because there's just something about print uh, that just makes it. Well, you can gaze upon it and admire it and share it with others, whether the mechanism you provide to mount it on the wall or put it on the coffee table and just forever, you know, yeah. have it 20 years later and bring you back to where you were. Mm-hmm. And what you're thinking is wonderful. You know, we even do have programs where um, we have people with uh, dementia. Uh, I have uh, Bob Stevens in Washington, D.C., and for three years, three times a week, uh, a one of our, uh, there's Mike, hey, Mike, uh anyway um she 30 years previous was an excellent street photographer Mm -hmm. and that part of her brain is intact and so her psychologist has our photographer go with her and she still takes great pictures three times a week three years she doesn't remember the photographer but mm-hmm. she remembers how to take pictures. Mm-hmm. He puts the pictures together in a, uh, a Word document, and then the psychologist uses it to try and stave off advancing dementia and tries to get a sense of how she's thinking. Rarely are her comments in the Word document in any way related to what she is photographing. And uh, it's, it's photography is a wonderful thing uh, for many reasons, including helping people cope with the challenges in their life. That's why we launched that um, senior senior shutter bugs. I don't know if you saw that on the side page. You know, a lot of these people, when they move into a a, uh, senior citizen community after they're used to being their own person, Mm -hmm. and now they've got to show up at dinner at the right time and meet new people and they're angry at their family and you know the photography club one we get some amazing photographs i don't know if you can go back there let's see here you go back i think it's more on the community correct uh uh, the red one red logo no 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 sorry that's instagram okay up up uh, celebrating say that one we just started this one and if you look at these photographs uh, we only have what 832 members now. It's a recent image, uh, and these people are wonderful photographers. We do every now and then you'll get someone on there, you know, I don't know what it's called hacking, or I love your photograph, and can I have your phone number? And yeah, you? you know, and we'll take that off, or you know something political or we take that out off 
this is all about the joy of photography. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that one. Oh, that one's amazing. Now, if you scroll down, Cindy gave us the full explanation of what that place is. And I think she said, go scroll down where I say, Cindy, this is a magnificent space. Look uh -huh. at, now look and see what she said. So now, I think she said it started in the mid-1500s. I wasn't sure if it was Vegas, but um, it's a fascinating story. And so people can communicate with each other, even if they don't know each other. Uh -huh. And but the photo enthusiasm has been around for centuries, yes. for and at least decades. And these senior shutter bugs who were here on this earth before we were can offer a lot. And this yeah. is a tribute to them. And it, and like I said, it, it's a, a beautiful community that y'all are use, making and, and using basically the internet, that social networks, stuff to kind of really help people yeah. um, meet other people. And they uh, love getting those prizes, those, yeah. uh, those uh, final works prizes. They, I mean, it is a big deal to them. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that they're happy with the product too. We, we do an HD um, uh, Chromalux metal print. And uh, I love that for photography. I think it 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 does really great contrast to it. it it's, Tell us more about that, please. It's the HD Metal Chromalux, um, and I can actually I'll pull up our site. Um, it, what I like about it for photography is just that it is a uh, the contrast is beautiful. The colors are vibrant on there. Um, if you come up here, you can come down to HD Metal. Let me find that one because we have updated HD. Uh, here we are. So this is what we, we do those on uh, right now. And uh, I, I love them. They're lightweight. Um, I think I have you guys with uh, them. Uh, well, I think we have one. Uh, what, what size do we get? Do you remember? Uh, like 11 by 14 or so, depending on the aspect ratio. And about how much do they weigh? Not much. They're really light on that size. Um, I've have, I have one that's five feet by four feet in my house. So you I tell have, you, I, I like big. You don't, um, have, a, you don't have a picture of it. Uh, not, you? not available right with me, but um, I did a family photo on it. Old family photo that I kind of restored in, in, in Photoshop. And, uh, I like this is what we put on the senior show. It has like a, a standout. What I like about that is it kind of makes it, you know. Oh, Three-dimensional. Yes. Yeah, so it looks really beautiful. And then there's people like me who love to get creative with this. I put maybe um, little lights that people use in, in wine bottles and stuff like that for decor. And I'll mount them to the back here so that when you see it on the wall, it has a glow. But uh, the HD Chromalux, um, and I do it on the white gloss, so that way the true whites will show through. And you, um, have a variety, you have a variety of choices. Yeah, it's a it's a great piece, and I'm I'm really glad that the recipients of it from your contest have really liked it. Oh, they, and they send, it. Us, they send us copies of them holding it, mm -hmm. and you know Ryan and I were sort of like. You know, it'd be better if we had something constant instead of different pictures of the grateful winners that look different every time. Mm -hmm. And then we said, well, maybe um, uh, Melissa will have an idea. Mm -hmm. And about six minutes later, he gave us six different ideas <laughs> that we have that's on there. Mm -hmm. That I think came from, if you scroll down. I think that came from you. And yes, you know, I think there, there's, uh, you talked about a wine bottle. Mm -hmm. Hi, Phyllis. Uh, but anyway, um, we were thinking, I don't know if it makes any sense, but we were thinking if you're recording this conversation and, yeah, I, yeah. and I don't look too foolish, <laughs> uh, then we'll put, right, you see where your logo is right now? Mm-hmm. I was thinking that we would replace it with a live recording. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And as soon as we're done with this uh, stream, it will be available for rewatch. And when you go to YouTube, you know, it gives you that embedded thing. So you're more than welcome to embed it or share it. You get a share copy link if you want to do that. But um, Brian probably knows 
how to do all of that. So yeah, Ryan, as soon as we're done with this, it will be available on our, on our, uh, it's youtube.com forward slash at finer works and you'll find it there. So you can rewatch this too. Right. Um, and any questions we get as this recording lives on our thing, uh, if there's something towards it. Now, one question um, that I, I would like to, you know, is like how, if somebody wants to become a, uh, a an instructor, an instructor right. for one of the cities that you offer uh, or a new city. Oh, 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 let's see, go to live courses. Uh -huh. See where it says instructors. Okay, I see that. Hold on, sorry. Um, instructors, right here. You know what? Go down just for one second. Go, go back. Uh -huh. See where it says private lessons with Carl Finkbeiner. Uh huh. He has a PhD in, I think, organizational statistics. He's a genius. He has the patience of Job. If anyone will be able to drive him distraction to distraction, it will be me. Uh, uh -huh. But he does all of these different, whether it's learning how to enhance your photographs on an Android or, you know, an hour PowerPoint on uh, flowers or John does uh, birds in flight uh, out of Orlando. That, so we have all these things online, too. But now if you go, uh, so Carl is someone who uh, he teaches for us in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And um, he... I think worked at Procter and Gamble for 30 years and see all these different things that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, and he actually uh, works with a place called the Philadelphia cricket club. Grand grandparents and their children take photography lessons together. Mm -hmm. and Carl does that. They uh, on the, uh, the ritzy country club. Uh, and he, uh, he organizes these classes, but he also does them online. There he is. There he is. Hi, Carl. He already told me he's going out to dinner with his wife. But he <laughs> did say that he would register, so it looks like more people are showing up. Than <laughs> and, he, and he can watch it on the replay. Um, and that's where we'll... He will. Like, some things live um, on YouTube, and you get to see the replay. And I, I love the replay because I'm able to pause... Right, now, go, now go to instructors. I'm I'm noticing that I'm interrupting you, but you know. No, no, no problem. Here we um, go. Now, now say look at. I'm trying to think. Oh, go to Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Scroll down. Okay. See it, Los Angeles. Now mm -hmm. click on that. No, click on the picture. I think. Okay, I think it's just taking time to load. There we, we go. have a, a go down to uh, Scott. Although Ming is great too. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonds is amazing. Go, we'll see what says read more. Okay. So you asked, how does one become an instructor? And we get uh -huh. calls all the time. And one, um, Ryan put together, um, what would you call it? Unending. <laughs> Every detail. Because there are a lot of things that have to go into this. First mm -hmm. of all, Scroll down a little bit further, and we need a slideshow. Uh -huh. It has to be certain specs. Do not ask me what they are. I can't. <laughs> uh, but there are all sorts of contingencies uh -huh. that are on this. Um, this like uh, what would I call it? Quicksand uh -huh. uh, details. It's like I, the way I used to do it was I would have 20 different um, uh, individual shorter emails mm -hmm. that people assumed I did that after finishing a bottle of vodka. <laughs> and Ryan politely said, you know, I have a little idea. And now um, they get this document where everything, all the details are in there. Mm -hmm. And... You know, sometimes even if someone's really excited about the idea of becoming a teacher, they're just not reliable. Mm -hmm. they, Pat, he loves to do that painting with light. Uh, he's also in a band with his son. Oh, how cool! He's such a cool guy. Um, but anyway, um, so it's kind of a test. 
Mm -hmm. If they say, oh, I'll get that to you in two weeks, and then I have my to-do list, you know, mm -hmm. the same way, you know, the pharaohs did in ancient Egypt with a, a roll of papyrus and a quill. Uh, Ryan has everything in his phone. Uh, but, um, you know, you can tell, just like we vetted you, often we meet the people, big companies, individuals who mean well, and they just don't, they, their circumstances make it hard for them to be reliable. And we can't, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Jeff, you owe me photographs, Seattle. Jeff Seattle. He only has about 10 photographs in the slideshow. Uh, but he's so busy, especially during this time of year, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. Uh, he's in Seattle and just a great guy. Oh, scroll down a little bit more. Okay. You'll see we have about 500 testimonials on, on that. We have about 500 testimonials uh, from uh, who are grateful for the classes that they took. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you scroll down, you can see these are all about Scott, his bio. And uh, Josh Clinton, oh, he's, I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's quite an interesting fellow and a great guy. I don't think I told him about this, but I'll, I'll after it's up, I'll nag everybody to watch it. Um, yeah. All testimonials from people who are happy with uh, the classes, and uh, the um, the ones where they're not happy, um, we uh, don't let them live. <laughs> but uh, that's him. Uh, he had his his wife Maritza took that picture, uh -huh. uh, and. Uh, he uh, he's a carpenter. He sent me a mahogany lazy Susan for Christmas, just to make me feel guilty because all I did was <laughs> send him an email. <laughs> but we become friends. Yeah, Our friendships vary. You know, there's Jerry, who uh, if you've looked at the website, mm -hmm. uh, he has uh, one of his books out is Why You Were Born, and mm -hmm. he's he's one of eight uh, people, uh, eight siblings. And he lives in San Francisco, and no matter what the uh, topic is, he extracts a positive way of looking at it, and then I cuss him out. And he says to me, Richard, why are you so mean to yourself? <laughs> and I say, I'm going to fly out there and wring your neck. <laughs> And instead, he came here and he said, I have all the directions to get us to. He was giving a lecture. And the night of the, and I'm driving, it's two hours away. And he takes out a post it pad with the directions. You know, I think it said drive. <laughs> and I blew, we, you know, we were like Laurel and Hardy. And I blow up at him and he looks at me like, What's, what are you so upset about? And uh, we got there. But um, we have different but intimate relationships with all of our photographers. And they've been with us for 17 years now. Wow. 17 years. Now, that's Ascot Hills, that one that just passed. Scott doesn't want us to use that. Do, uh, so if somebody is interested in, like, like I said, because when you look at your cities here, and there's uh, 24 within the U.S., right? I think y'all are also... And there are 54 with Match. So, or if there's someone lives someplace where we don't have yet, I just get a hold of Amy. Mm -hmm. We just opened up, um, well, San Antonio, and you connected me with um, Jim. Jim. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not sure if he's going to be able to do it, but he recommended somebody named David Oliver. Uh, and... Uh, you know, we, we sort of build a network. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone in uh, in a city where we're not between the 54 match uh, cities and the um, 24 DPA cities, I just call Amy and I say, do, do you think that there's enough of a match.com market there where we can open up classes in that city? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
when we just opened up Las Vegas. Yeah, that was the other one you were telling me about. And um, she's not even on the website yet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she's a wonderful lady. We're Instagram friends now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Heather. I see it's Houston. I was wondering if we knew any of the Houston people, the Texas people. Yeah, let's see. Look, you know what? Go to Jim. Wait a sec. Now go to Jim Caldwell. Is just the sweetest guy. Um, but go to Jim. Uh, Jim used to run all of the Sony division. He's the one who launched. I want to do this program, mm -hmm. Tony, uh, and he, uh, that was 20 years ago. I remember having dinner with him and him saying, I want to do this. And I walked out with my colleague and, and he was euphoric. My colleague it was a big program called Sony digital days. And I was like, yeah, he's full of crap. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and, but it did go back to live courses. He's in Austin. Go oh, back to live courses up on top. Okay. Uh, and go to instructors. Instructors. Oh, go to instructors. Okay. Yeah. Oh, instructors. Because the match, since they're private workshops, now go to Houston. Okay. Now go to Houston. I keep pointing at my screen. Like you <laughs> and scroll down. Scroll down. I wonder if he's in Dallas. Um, Go to go back and see. See, we can't put them on Austin because that's a private. Yeah, go, go back there. Let me see instructors. Uh, Dallas, you said. Dallas, yeah. And if not, just go to Jim Malcolm Photography. Oh, well, that guy's amazing. Uh, he Michael. Just says, Michael. Uh, he um, is a National Geographic photographer, and I was having trouble with his name. And he <laughs> said, "Just think of." Give me a whiskey. <laughs> a great guy. Um, you know what? Oh, um, go to uh, go to uh, search. Can you search? Um, sure. I was just going to check really Jim, quick. Just to make Jim sure. Malcolm. I've made a mental note of certain people who I wanted to sort of. No, no, not on our website. Oh, okay. The Jim Malcolm Photography. Austin, Jim Malcolm Photography, Austin. Oh, that, well, yeah, that, that's probably it. Here we go. Go there. And website. Yeah, website. He does great work and they love, he does uh, match workshops for us. And uh, his wife is a caregiver. And we're, trying to organize a uh, community, um, a senior community there. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, photography is a wonderful coping mechanism for people mm -hmm. who are undergoing a radical lifestyle change in their old age with their family. There he is. There he is. There's Jim. He was the guy who pulled, uh, who um, put it together to run Sony Digital Day. Uh, and uh, we're still very friendly, uh, and he's uh, he's quite a guy, and I have him to thank uh, for a number of years of the Sony Digital days when I had the corporate job. And uh, he, even though he was in a gigantic corporation, he told me the truth. And they don't always go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, I think this is something, there's two aspects of Digital Photo Academy that to me, I think are just going to be really, you know, intriguing for a lot of people who are our customers. There's the people who are wanting to learn more with their photography skills. You have artists who really are having to now add that to their, you know, box of a lot of our students because, for that. Yeah, if not only for reference photo, but to document their work. And, and showcase it when they want to bring it to a gallery. Exactly. So there's that aspect of there. There's also people who are, you know, career photographers that are customers of ours that something like that, having a uh, 
an organized kind of now because you have the Toronto and so you're also outside of the U.S. as well. But there's people who would like to start that teaching or giving the seminars. But again, you don't know you don't want to go teach maybe on a, a you know, a university level, but you want to have workshops where you're still working with community people because many communities, like I said, I, I love the community dark rooms that we used to have back in the day here that are now gone. Um, Jim's photo essay group and a couple of camera clubs here offer some kind of community, you know, there, but it's trying to reach that younger market that's coming up. This, this uh, group that has never dealt really with a print, you know, everything they're, they're used to seeing photography on digital devices, like a cell phone, their computer screen. That disappears. Um, yeah. I used to like, it, it's something that was out briefly. You could buy a CD disc to run on your, on your, not on your computer, but on your TV. And or it would on print. Print. Or like or on slides. Print sitting on your coffee table. Yes. Yeah. No, you're and, right. I, and I've, uh, you know, I still like, I'll put my Google uh, up there and I've told Google, this is what I want to see was like street art scenes and black and white photography. And so when my, TV is on this, you know, kind of like a screensaver is running on and it's just these images uh, that are like, and the TV is huge. <laughs> so, but to see some of those and so it's so beautiful. And, um, but again, it, it's something uh, not tangible. I can't like, I, I see it it's for a little bit. And I'm like, where, where was that photo? Where was it from? Who was a photographer? Yeah. Um, there's stories. I, and I'm one of the, like, James will tell me, he goes, how many people still read art books? I love art books and photography books. I have one of Rolling Stone's photographers that showcases so many iconic uh, oh. photos that, yeah, that have just, you know. Yeah. It, and the mean, idea of a, of a permanent print. Yes. You know, 20 years, you, you get a, a photo, a lovely photograph of a six-year-old, and then you show it, uh, you know, you display it on your wall. I have pictures. That's what I like about prints. Uh -huh. I have pictures. Oh, well, here's one of Jill. She maybe she'll come back and uh -huh. show you her gray hair uh -huh. now. But they, can you see that? Not. That's right. There, there we go. Yeah. Right by my desk. I don't know uh -huh. who that guy is looking at. <laughs> but uh, I look at that. That is so great. Isn't that wonderful? Uh huh. And this picture, what you were, you were probably thirty here now. So this was like seventy-five years ago. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but I get to look at that. Although I love her long gray hair, and I think it's beautiful. But the idea of prints that you can keep forever—that's uh -huh. her cyanotype in the background. But um, I tried to get Fuji years ago when I had the corporate job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and it might even be, exist now that you could work with a local retailer. And when you're taking a digital photograph, one of them can flash because the computer says, this one's worth keeping. Mm -hmm. Press this button. It'll be printed at our local store and mail to your house uh -huh. and you pay, you pay up you pay right then and there uh -huh. um and it would be a quick and easy way it used to be that people had to print because it was the only way they could see the picture uh -huh. and that was the motivation now that people can just look at it on a screen they're like well i already got the prize which is me seeing the picture especially if it's one of me uh -huh. You know, people don't say that, but you can see it in their eyes when they're looking for an album. They're thinking, where's me? Where's me? Where's me? But anyway, if there was something in the camera, and there might be now, I don't know, mm -hmm. camera that a photograph that really hit hit the spot and it flashes and it says, would you like a print of this? And yep. then press the button and it is somehow remotely connected to your local... A photo retailer, they print it, 
and ship it to your house and you have an account. Yeah. Any more prints would be, uh, you know, would be in existence for people to enjoy permanently. Yeah, there's integrations with different websites that do, you know, like Instagram, which is something I was asking James about as we're getting ready to update ours. We're, we're having a new integration. It's going to slowly roll out. Some users will have access to it. You know, we already have Dropbox that you're able to do that, you know, upload your image, Dropbox. But we're also going to add um, your Google Drive on there so you can add your your images and they just go straight to us and you can make it. Oh, and then, and then, right. And so, so I get 20% of that. <laughs> and so those are something I wanted to see also with Instagram. And and the thing with Instagram, I know James is like, well, the, the resolution already of the file is kind oh. of compressed. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, well, you know, th there's companies that, that do work with Instagram oh, and they make right. small, small little prints. And I think something along that line will help the well, software that can improve I think there's something uh, a dear friend of mine uh, Dave Moser has a software that he and some other colleagues have concepted called Radiance mm -hmm. have you heard of Radiance no I haven't I'm and I think they might have a feature where they can so I don't know again mm -hmm. I'm the last century I'm not really. <laughs> but anyway I think they might have in that software the uh, capacity to sharpen an image. Uh, yeah, Topaz has been one that I've, I've a lot of photographers have told me about. Um, so and, maybe that could be tied into what you were talking about with yeah. Instagram. So to, yeah, it, that, Topaz is something I've tried to play with. Uh, I'm still not that proficient in it. I'll, sometimes I go back to Photoshop and just play with the blur, the sharpness, and. I got used to doing that because I used to hand paint photos to restore. Oh, so that one, can you see? Back in the background on the wall? That's, that's a hand painted one. So, yeah, so there's a lot of work that goes into that. And in Photoshop, I'm still not as, you know, pro as a lot of people are, but um, it's something I've played with over the years because. Well, we teach that, we'll give you free lessons. <laughs> I, I really like doing the digital and I like uh, the editing end of photography sometimes. And I still like taking um, my photos. I know I'm always telling Jim, I'm going to get a camera. I'm going to get an SLR again and do it. But then I do it. I'm like, I really like playing with my negatives. I really like doing, you know, the processing <laughs> myself and doing enlargers and working with the chemicals. <laughs> go, go back to instructors on our page. Okay. Let me pop that back in. On present and Jill uh, teaches that at a place called Parsons in New York City, and I put her on our website. We would kill each other. <laughs> but um, go back to Digital Photo Academy. Okay, Digital Photo Academy right here. Now click on instructors, and then click on New Jersey. I mean, New York. Sorry, oh. New, York. New York. Hold on, let me go back. Scroll down. This That's New right. Jersey. Hold on, let me get back to New York. She teach, she's teach. she been teaching for years and years at Parsons. Scroll down. Scroll down. I think she's on. I think. Um, keep going. There, there she is. Yeah. Joe McNally took that photograph uh, in what? 2005 in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Um, scroll down. <laughs> scroll down. Scroll. There's one of her books. Oh yeah, that's uh, that yeah. was a, a really incredible exhibit. I saw the YouTube video on that. It was yeah. And, and those are other. But keep going. I want to show you her dark room, and then you and your family have to come visit. Uh, and keep going. These are you know. That's not her wheel. This is our house. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for her dark room. And you and your family, we have plenty of room. You can come. Hudson Valley is quite wonderful. And here is her dark room. And she she teaches there. That's her office. And then there's her dark room. Oh, yeah. And so come down, come over, or, you know, chuck the family for yeah. a few weeks. 
I'm sure you've thought of it. Oh, I, I, I get on planes sometimes by myself and travel all over the place. Come, come stay with us. And Jill teaches all of this stuff around the world. She spent six weeks in Thailand. She goes to Norway every year. She likes to get away from me. <laughs> uh, and I don't blame her. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's there's an inertia to submerge yourself in this sort of tactile and kind of elaborate process. But once you do, um, you know, it's so satisfying. I mean, not that I would know. I'm more of a delegator. Jill, can you do this? <laughs> These are beautiful. I, I, like I said, there's so much that um, DPA is, really offers people. So if anybody has any questions, should they go ahead and um, I believe yeah. I saw the email on here. Should they email? What's the best way to get well, the email DPA booking? Okay. DPA booking singular uh -huh. at Digital Photo Academy, and uh, they'll uh, get an answer. Um, we just started a newsletter leading off with uh, Finer Works. With uh, well, that's how Phyllis found out that we gave credit to Gay for her photograph. Yeah. Uh, but um, and people can subscribe to our newsletter once a month. Okay. That's that's great. And I'm glad you thank you all so much for taking time to, you know, sit down with us and tell people about DPA. We really appreciate it. Ryan, thank you so much for running back in technical. I know you're doing a lot there too. And uh, Jill, he's, he's, he's doing, doing everything. I just get in the way. <laughs> and, and thanks to Jill for letting us intrude into y'all's home and come in right when she's coming in from work. And uh, I, I really would love to have you on one of these too, Jill. Well, I would love that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, great. Um, is there anything closing that you guys yeah, want to have good. out there? Move over. Oh, just a little bit. Okay, let me let me uh, put that on here so you guys are there. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. again, thank you all so much. Uh, yeah, I, I had fun. I I hope that came across. And I think um, everybody did. I meant it. You or you and your family are welcome to uh, come stay with us, and you and Jill can go down to the dark room. And I would love that. <laughs> Anytime. Oh yeah, that'd be great. God, I have to, I have to go find my old apron because I have more stained clothes from just you know developer than anybody can imagine. I'm like, oh yeah, it's bleach and developer designed um, clothing that I probably have. <laughs> I have more <laughs> aprons. Yes, I have plenty of aprons here okay. with lots of stains. Y'all are wonderful people. I hope you know everybody gets a chance to kind of uh, reach out to you guys and uh, learn more about uh, Digital Photo Academy. Well, I'm glad that you have empowered us, and I'm glad that we met. Was it on Instagram? Um, I did a quick thing to let people know to go to YouTube, and uh, and I usually take a little clip How out of here. How did you and I meet? How did you and I meet? How did you and I meet? You contacted me via email uh, with your phone number, and I gave you a call. On Instagram or? On Instagram. Yeah. I think you contacted me through Instagram. Yeah, and that was what about? Six months ago, eight months, Some, something like that, like maybe maybe less than that. Yeah. I think it seems like we've gone really fast with this, so we can tell by the the number of winners. Um, so I think that I think that first one might have been in October. So yeah, yeah, we were we weren't them right away because we weren't sure you were reliable. <laughs> and now you know we're here. Yes. Well, great. Well, you guys have a great evening. Thanks again for doing this, and uh, everybody else on here. Um, remember those. Uh, dates to get in by Christmas. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our customer care uh, team as well. Any questions for uh, DPA, you can, if you have them here, I will relay them also. Could I throw the, number, the toll free number, 91, no, uh, Think. Uh, 877. Uh, I said it here. Oh, is it there? Uh, I think so. Let me see if we have that on there. So, Eight seven seven three seven two 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 three one. I think. You got it right there. So those will be the contacts. Ask me in three years. I probably won't be able to. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you all have a good evening, and thanks again for doing this. And uh, for everybody else, uh, we'll see you all next month. Have a good and happy Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you so very much.